the button. All right, man, I gotta grab my grab the speaker. Of course you this do. Is... Even money, it's not gonna work. Even money, uh, it money was plugged in, money. so it should work. This is how professional we are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hold on a second. I don't know why you hit record. You knew I wasn't ready. That's why he hit record. <laughs> so my version's going on the YouTube now. <laughs> no, it's not. All right. Are we all ready? Kyle's adjusting still. Are we ready? <laughs> We're good. It's fine. Welcome to go. every oh I like that too. Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of lemma champ or lucky track dog league you run, SCC or NASA, we won't discriminate as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussion, tips, tricks, news and notes in the world of amateur endurance racing, whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or we're lucky enough and Chrissy gives us just the tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mental. <laughs> and we are Everyone Racers. Thanks for coming back and listening to a Bones episode of our podcast. It's episode 206, and the human body contains somewhere between 206 and 213 bones, depending on who you count and how many are broken. <clears throat> Children are apparently born with 300 bones, but as we age, that number decreases. So... If you're not driving a car or riding a motorcycle, breaking those bones, why not use those phalange bones in your hand to check off squares on our bingo card? You've I wasted time on worse things in life. I, I realized halfway through the introduction that I forgot to push record. So mental, you will need to post this show <laughs> this week. Great. It no happens. one really needs the introduction. It's okay. <laughs> you know, whenever we have a guest, we ramp up the professionalism like nobody's business. Clearly. See, that's yes, what you call clearly. it. That's what you call it. Okay. Good. Speaking professional. of professional. Yeah. Jeff, why don't you start just telling us what you're working on? Oh, uh, well, I, I had to travel to uh, the 50th and 90th birthday party of a couple of Jen's relatives. And we were in your hood, not that far away. Not We drove by your house. I shouldn't say that. Uh, and then we some eggs to, kept driving. Yeah, yeah, no, it wasn't that close. And then we went out to central Pennsylvania and actually spent some time at chocolate world. It was very exciting. The delicious. It was. Um, and then I came home and I did the battle with the beast from Berks County. Fricking lantern flies have mm. invaded my yard i had to cut down a tree i had to like wow. yeah it was really nasty they're wow. absolutely disgusting yeah they are and uh yeah so uh anybody in new york new jersey pennsylvania these things are gross kill them when you see them uh and then i uh i actually still am battling if, if anybody on youtube can see i'm still not in the office i'm still at my son's uh school desk because uh, we're in like a tornado alley right now, and I didn't put all my furniture back until the floodwaters reside. So, still in the basement, still or recede. Out. You don't want yeah. the floodwaters to reside. That's true. That would be recede. bad. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, unless you, unless you like, you know, put a heating element and turn it into a hot tub. We didn't have that much. We had wet carpet. It wasn't that bad. So, oh, ho no. hopefully by next week I'll be back in the office. We'll push all the furniture back. So yeah, Excellent. so uh, Chris and Chrissy, you, uh, let's go with Chrissy first. What you working on? You got any floods over there? Uh, no, the yards are flooded. Uh, we got plenty of rain today, but uh, I none of it, none in our basement. We have some pumps that work very hard, so that's all good. Uh, my parents did get some water in their basement. They are currently cleaning it out because we have plenty of rain going on here. Uh, no real wind at all. Uh, not that I saw yeah, just breezes, but nothing. Not, none of the tornado was supposed to be hit in our area, just the rain. So anyway, uh, this weekend we were hiking and we recovered. We had some hard times walking on Sunday. Yes. Yep. Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. So, I watched on the social media. Y'all went hardcore. We did go hardcore. Yep. We went harder core than we planned. We didn't make the summits that we thought because everything that we hiked was harder than we planned. So we got a good workout. Our legs were tired. Uh, Chris's feet probably are doing better. You can talk about yours. Yeah, I can stand now. Yeah. Yeah. And I can walk that I don't walk like a duck. I would sing every time because standing up or from laying down 
to standing up is very difficult. Uh, so anything was using your lower legs or upper legs is really what my problem was. But and then we unpacked, had to undo everything, wash everything because it was all damp and gross. And uh, now we're headed out for another weekend for the long weekend, this upcoming Labor Day weekend. And I did some cleaning because when you pack and do things like this, you just neglect your house and stuff. So that's what I've been up to. Now, another weekend hiking or are you going to the Cape? Hell no. No, <laughs> no, we're, no, we won't hike till next week or next, excuse me, next week, next year. Uh, it was, this is enough for a very long time. We're, we're good. And boat time. Uh, and now. Boat time. Take the boat yeah. out time too. I've, well. I've, I've had those kind of like soreness days when you literally are on the couch going, I know I have to pee, but it is not really urgent enough yet. Well, I'm, it, just I'm the, gonna keep holding it. We, we were just uh, that dehydrated. So that was an, a nice option to have to be because that's how bad things were. Despite but drinking gallons, of gallons water a day. and gallons yeah. of water. When you guys were like, oh, it's a good thing. It's not so hot because we were like, no, we're, it's going to be cold. We're we pl- plan for long sleeve shirts and capelines. Yeah, it was. If you saw the pictures, uh, only my friends saw the pictures, but uh, it was so hot that shirts were too much. So uh, we we only needed a shirt. We didn't ever need it when we were at the top of the a mountain. And even then it was just kind of breezy. So that's how hot it was. It was really hot. Mm-hmm. Yep. I can see that now Chrissy goes shirtless on this week's edition of everyone racers. I was <laughs> on, my, on the internet. Um, I have sports bra on, but Chris that goes was shirtless. Chrissy goes shirtless on the internet. Yes. In episode 206. Chris, what are you working on? Yes. Uh, Tell us your feet story. I've been down my feet. Well, they they had some blisters and now I can wear shoes a little, which is good. (laughs) It was better than last time. So recovery from hiking. There's good. I've also been working on the Mazda. I started off, I attached the new flywheel and clutch, and then I failed to attach the big beefy speed three transmission that we are adapting to the car because the speed three trans is so much bigger than the regular non-speed trans, like massively different. It's a different manufacturer. I'm amazed it actually fits, but I could not get it into the chassis onto the clutch around the subframe. So I was going to have to either pull the subframe to clear some space to be able to fit it up there or drop the engine and mate the two on the floor. And I decided I was going to drop the engine to mate the two on the floor because I have a leaking timing cover that is impossible to do with the engine in the car, really. So, so we should mention this is the... 2007 Mazda 3. 7 Mazda 3. It had a, a six speed from the later Mazda 3. Correct. But, but now you're putting in the speed Mazda three. Speed 3 from the correct generation. Correct. Right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Mostly because it was uh, a third of the price of another of the trans we were using and also much more available and much more durable and has a fancy differential in it. So this is the cheaper option. It's just a little more work but I think it'll last well in the long run, but this car has definitely escalated quickly. I mean, there's no right front suspension now, no engine, no trans, like the car is in many pieces for what's supposed to be the, the reliable, good car. The and infamous the- while you're in there, itis. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, this uh, car was featured t- featured today on the lemons Instagram. With its spectacular theme. Um, so anyway, uh, also I had to rebuild a lawnmower carb because it wasn't working. I found that apparently I have never changed the air filter on the lawnmower in 16 years. Because I, I have never changed off. an air filter <laughs> on a lawnmower oh. ever. Well, I we never badly. knew there was one until well, it died. And as I was like, trying to, I knew it was there. I just never thought to change it. I've changed the oil. <laughs> I've sharpened the blade, like all that stuff. Sure. Filter. Nah, I'm amazed. I just bang it there. out every now and then. That we were beyond that. Like, yeah, I know. I even Ours took the air gun and I was blowing the, between disgusting. the slots out trying to get it. I have a new one. Hey, new one on order, all of five dollars. So, uh, that's the ridiculous aspect of it. Yeah. You, right. You know, it's, it's a, yeah, this 37 cent part. Right. So, check, yeah. So, check those people when you take it apart this year. Um, on the Mercedes front, it, it, the car threw a, about a month ago through an error code for the radar cruise control stuff and it wasn't resetting. So, and I, then went down the rabbit hole of Mercedes software code readers for a modern car. And eventually I, I settled on a, basically it's a Chinese knockoff of the hacked 
of the Mercedes actual Zentry software with a dongle that attaches to the car. And damn thing actually works. Showed up from Hong Kong in a laptop, an old laptop. But okay, fine. I'm never t- plugging that into anything or the internet or anything at all. <laughs> no, wait, but, wait. It showed. It, it came with an old laptop, or you yeah, used an old laptop? No, it came with an old laptop. They already they loaded it onto the hard drive. It's all there. Like I said, I am never uh, plugging that into anything else. But it's enough that I got it. I, it talks to the car. It read the special. They read all of the 50 something modules in it. It gave me the really specific code, then gave me um, the you know, things to check and told me the problem. The problem was the sensor is apparently at a different level of alignment than it's supposed to be. Like it got knocked out of alignment. So then I start looking around and wouldn't you know, it looks like somebody backed into the car at some point and because the grill is out of like it got popped out of where it's supposed to be in the bumper. Like the and clips, it's like angled the, the back. body clips yeah. popped out. And I know exactly when it happened. We were parked in the, in the food court area, the food court, food truck area in New Haven, Connecticut. It was all, you know, it's parallel parking. And actually we were leaving there is when the error code first came on. It makes perfect sense now. So now I've got to pull the front bumper, pull the grill, realign everything, and then do the calibration, because which I can do because I have the Mercedes fake software. So, so far tentative success with the Chinese hacked thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> See how it works. That's intriguing. I'm going to yeah. need, of course, that link to you purchasing that thing. So I can do the same thing. When you sure. told me you had an error code of the Mercedes, I was alarmed because I'm not in a position to buy this one yet. So. I know. Sorry. No, you can, uh, you, you can get a different version of the software. That's less expensive than the one I got. I had to get the fancy newest. And one, it's so too. annoying to not have this working because none of, not just the automatic driving, but the, um, you don't have the sensors that show if there's a car passing, like all of the different sensors. It oh, relies like a on blind oh, spot. Yeah. Monitoring yeah. Sensors. yeah. But there's a once, lot. Yeah, once one goes, it said, Nope, you don't get any of it. You don't get any of it. Nope. Screw it. Yep. Nope, it's not working. Yep. Having to use, having to use your cars. eyes like a loser. I know. Well, no, I have to do stop and go traffic, but like with feet and hands and stuff <laughs> instead of saying, which go. is, it's so do hard this. to do when you're getting the massage. I know just, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, anyway, Benson, what are you working on? Kyle, these Mercedes are way newer than you're used to working on. I, I don't even remotely want to touch that stuff. I'm curious how much the price difference was between the legit Mercedes computer and this Hong Kong knockoff. Um, the legit Mercedes ones, I think, are twenty thousand dollars, and then a you know two thousand dollar a year subscription fee and whatnot. So, um, uh, orders orders of magnitude. So, Jeez. are we talking two hundred bucks or two grand? Uh, it's about six hundred shipped. Well, that's not bad. Wow. Okay. That's yeah. still heavy. But I would order it for a car that I'm gonna we're gonna own for a couple hundred thousand miles. I figure it's going to pay for itself in the long run when things very inevitably go wrong and I don't have to go to some specialist to fix it. Yeah, just being able to like reset uh the maintenance, you know, service G do or whatever, stuff like that. Well, that's easy. You can do that through the menus, but it's the uh, it's the things like I am sure at some point another module is going to yeah, go. the bot it's got 87 body modules, right? Right. Or the, like the module yeah. for the passenger massaging seat is going to go or something. And I need to know that and then be able to calibrate a new one when it gets yeah. in. And, uh, Kyle, sorry. you're, you're, you're making oh. a face, but last yeah. year, <laughs> last year they were down in Carolina, uh, at uh, Camden, South Carolina. I flew into Atlanta, landed at 11 o'clock at night, rented a car, got in at three in the morning and was uh, just a little tired. And Chrissy suggested, go sit in the car and turn the massager on. And I kind of chuckled and both of them said, we're absolutely serious. There are four menus of massagers on the seats of this oh, car, uh-huh, including, uh-huh. including energizing massage. And it didn't lie. It was amazing. I like the wave one. Wave is, <laughs> wave is our wave. Yeah. That's, that's the one I could go to. We, you should mention, what is this? It's a, it's an 18, 17, E 17, E 400 wagon. Yeah, that's a certain kind of crazy. Yeah. That's it is. It's a certain kind of beautiful is what it is. It's a, it's, yeah, it's a different kind of crazy. We have plenty of other terrible old cars that don't do any of these things and are actually broken <laughs> more often than this one. So anyone, like, yeah. want, anyone want to buy a Seth Realm? Or go drive an 84 <laughs> Corvette. See how good you feel after that. Oh. Go <laughs> it only has a little Hanta in it. Uh, uh, 
Chris, are you done? Because uh, yeah, we throw like, I'm trying to. Th- I tried to throw it. To I know. Mental, I know. And then we well, kept and, talking and about so. speaking, speaking of Mercedes, I got in Sunday night from Salt Lake City, Utah, at the Utah Motorsports Campus, formerly Miller Motorsports Park, and the uh, of course the the Benz did exactly what it did so well, knocked an hour off of a commute across the desert, you know, at ludicrous speeds. Or is best at crossing continents. It yes, really it is. really. You know, you pull in. Oh. I'm still fine. Uh, met up actually with an old buddy, Grant Ellis. Uh, he ended up being one of the instructors and he gets to the car and goes, Oh God, 160,000 miles. Well, I hope you've done the head bolts. I'm like, Oh, not only were the head bolts done before I bought it. So were the lifters. Oh, well then this thing will probably go 300,000. Yeah, exactly. It's going to go 300,000 miles. And then I did a burnout, but uh, while I was up there, I finally, all the times I've worked with extreme experiences, they got one. I have not had a chance to drive the new C8. So I got to drive the C8 for warmups on Sunday generally impressed it it handled really well it's very predictable stepped out horribly underpowered in that realm of supercars uh just would would have a perfect exit on the main straightaway and just watch the 48 gtb absolutely motor me like it's my favorite car in the fleet (laughs) uh and then uh on sunday went out with a hellcat guy showed up with a 38 dodge coupe street rod he had built really nice guy talked to him for a while it gets into the car and he just he he knew he was getting into the dodge hellcat and it wasn't and he was parking this thing in a corner and then taking the turn and finally i just i I got through him i said do not touch the brake and he turned the wheel and i turn it more and he's freaking out but he finally cranks on it and he goes oh my god and he couldn't speak for the next three corners he's like "My, my mind is blown this this thing turns you know it's not a porsche but you know he was like i just his calibration from what a 707 horsepower Dodge would do was impressive. I uh, spent most of Tuesday back and forth with the Nevada DMV trying to register my RV because my VIN number says it's a Ford E450 service, you know, work truck, yeah, but it's a clear- vehicle or whatever. It's clearly an RV. So everyone was very nice, but no one had the authority to say it's an RV, not a truck. They had to go up like four levels of management for someone to actually sign off that it was an RV before they would give me my plates. And because, you know, no one else has a class C RV that used to be, a, you know, this is the front of a Ford van. I don't understand. Yeah. They're just like not popular at all. No. Well, when they're, regi- the when, they're re- when they're registered new, it's not a big deal, but because mine was coming from Georgia with a Georgia registration, they were, yeah, it was throwing all kinds of freak outs. So, but yeah, they, yeah, they finally figured that out. And, uh, I put this on our Instagram today, but my Steve Magnete notebook from, uh, the, uh, 2011, uh, Barrett Jackson auto auction arrived. You can check that out on our Instagram, or we've got a link to his Instagram. If he's still selling some of them, he's, uh, using it as a fundraiser to fund more of his junkyard gold series, which I just thought it was cool. And it's, I, I always like that guy. Intense. I, I always, I like that's how I really started to follow him was when he would do the bear jocks. I'm like, my God, that guy knows everything. Well, I'll see on the 67 halfway through the model year in the plant in Indiana, they started painting the hood uh, hinges body color. But before that they were all spray painted black and he, he just knows all this and it's, it's an impressive bunch of notes. So yeah, you know, little goofball thing that I really like and probably no one else will care about, but yeah, I was really happy to see that coming through. Hey, we spent more Compliments. on stupider. That was a spot on impersonation. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And hey, that new voice you just heard on our podcast again, that is Kyle Smith, a contributor to both Haggerty's online articles and print and also their YouTube. Kyle, welcome to Everyone Racers. We're Thanks sorry. Um, <laughs> so what you working on? Oh, you would think you could see there's about 16 sets of wheels behind me. But the most recent thing that I've touched wrenches to was actually my washing machine, uh, which there's feels nothing appropriate wrong with in, that. Mm. in this conversation. Uh, yeah. So trying to get that running again. And then the uh, SL125 I've got behind me, just got a new set of tires. I'm prepping that for some uh, trail riding this fall. What would probably help you with that is if you very carefully pulled that Porsche 911 banner, rolled it up and mailed it to me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so now, uh, I, I noticed that you right behind you there, you have a car with a flat six, but it's not, it's rear the American engine, version, rear engine, rear flat engine, six. flat rear six, engine. American version, flat six. Yep. So 1965 Chevrolet Corvair. This is the first year of the second generation car, essentially uh, so the end better. of the run. Oh yeah. yeah. They're, I, I was an early model guy. 
uh, I owned a 64 all through high school and then switched nice. to late models when I grew up and had more than three pennies to rub together. <laughs> that, that's a late model. This is a late model. This is a late mo- just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Late, Some- late model for me is late sixties. That's yeah. it's new as it gets. So, someone yes. once told me they were unsafe at any speed, but I didn't believe them. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, driving one of the swing axle cars. So the, that unsafe at any speed really traces roots back to the early generation, the 1960 to 64 cars, which were a swing axle design, which if you're familiar with any automotive stuff, the swing axle is also in your early 911s and yep. your Volkswagen Beetles yep. and a bunch of other cars that do not have the reputation. Uh, and the Corvair was only a chapter of unsafe at any speed. People think the entire book was this takedown of Chevrolet and the reality is it's, it's really not the case. I drove one for years as a teenager. And if you know how teen boys drive, uh, if that car didn't kill me, uh, I don't think it's going to kill you. Mm -hmm. Put it that way. It didn't, didn't Nader own a second gen Corvair? He did. And it's currently for sale. If you would like to own one. No, I don't. uh, But that's, I mean, not that one, but. Oh, come on. I don't have anything against Corvairs. I just don't want the one Ralph Nader owned. Yeah. It lived out in his museum in the uh, National Tort Museum. If you ever wanted to go to an, a museum about like insurance law, uh, no, no, oh. that's no. the place. That's we, the most exciting museum you can have, think of. I know no. somebody. This is actually what I do for work. I have no interest <laughs> at all in going to this. I think you do. No, no. Yes. What is no. even on the wall? Someone like, else brings what? up insurance <laughs> first. <laughs> when you go there, like what's on the wall? Like uh, a big disclaimer. No disclaimer. A big <laughs> disclaimer. <laughs> If you walk in here, you will not be able to sue us. <laughs> oh, I like Ralph Nader. Just whatever. Oh, yeah. he's, not, no, no. he's not the devil. Hey. No. Anyway, <laughs> uh, anything else, sir, Kyle? I kind of just derailed you from your no, you used to. No, what you're that's, working on. that's it for the moment. Yeah. No, uh, you, are, you have on. no idea how often our show starts out with one of us working on an appliance that we... <laughs> Everyone but Chris probably should have called a professional about, and it usually involves duct tape and hose clamps to get it running again. And I, I don't work on appliances. When they uh, die, I replace them. Uh, <laughs> I'm really I would rather at- be working on the washing machine than that Mazda project. That thing sounds like it's been a nightmare for three episodes now. But it runs we're getting there. so good. It was uh, such a it good was, race car. It was Chrissy's car. She bought it new. And... Uh, I, I did see your episode of Kyle's Garage where you pulled the carpet up out of the MG. They pulled the carpet out of Chrissy's car that she's owned since new, and they found nothing. Well, there were five paper clips and two <laughs> almonds and maybe maybe about three pennies. Maybe. Right. And it, not even sticky change, just good not, change. It was yeah, fine like, change. Like clean, like clean. Yeah. Impossible. I probably have more <laughs> sticky change in my car. I'm, I'm my- absolutely <laughs> positive you do. Yeah. All right, all right, Let's so, move on. Yes. News and notes time. I'll go first because my name is in the first section there. And uh, Mental, did you find this story? Because this is fantastic. So I did. And then I signed on. And whoever uh, found my story, I am so happy. Oh, there you go. So I found yours. So we got it. Uh, Ford does not play with you homophobics out there. After a blue version of the European Ford Raptor, which is the Ranger sized Ford Raptor, uh, was called very gay by some commenter. Ford created a digital version called the quote, very gay Raptor. But according to Douglas Pageant, at Out Magazine, a virtual model of the popular truck wasn't enough for Ford. They decided to quote, take it one step further and created a very real hashtag, very gay Raptor foiled in gold and rainbow colors. They took the very gay Raptor through the streets of Cologne, Germany in celebration of Christopher street day, as well as the Berlin pride celebration story from out.com. And I never thought I'd be quoting an out.com article here that wasn't written by our friend, (laughs) Brett Burke. So yeah, there we go. Very exciting. Do you like how Porsche sound? Yes. We already know. We already know my answer. Yes. Break out your best headphones because we, and by we, we mean Porsche, have a digital event for you because on Saturday, September 18th, 2021 at 5 p.m. I don't know if that's their time, my time. I'm going to find out. The Porsche Museum is going to start the engines of their racing and series vehicles from the company's collection and the museum uh, that 
all of these cars that have made history at racetracks around the world or going into the future. Quote, we are very happy to announce the first digital sound night to fans and customers all over the world. The Corona pandemic faces us with big challenges, but also allows us to think of new opportunities, emphasizes Achim Sekchal, head of Porsche Heritage and Museum. Quote, due to numerous injuries, we noticed that it is not only us that miss the engine sound. This year, for the very first time, we will broadcast the typical Porsche sound via a digital live event to all countries and in every living room around the world. So this is a digital version of something that they used to do every year prior to 2020. I, my, I've got a nerd on like you wouldn't believe. And yes, I have every intention of turning off the lights, being in my living room and you know, annoying my neighbors with this. It's going to be fantastic. Link to the press announcement is in our show notes. And as soon as we get, they, they it ends with more uh, data as they figure it all out. And we will keep you updated, Chris. Minor adjustment. That's due to numerous inquiries. They're doing this, not, not numerous injuries. injuries. <laughs> Sorry. It's a yeah, very yeah. different reason to change. Slight, the, the slightly, slightly <laughs> different. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, All right. Sorry. It's got his hand caught in the fan. You better not do it live. I was fun. thinking, I was thinking the pandemic because, you know, even Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley have popped positive for Corona. And I'm like, oh, they were talking about people catching Corona. So, yeah, sorry about that. No, it's okay. Thank you. Just, just want that changes the nature of the story if it's injuries. Yeah. All Don't right. Care. <laughs> Porsche sound good. Tune in yeah. computer. Good. All right. So this is not really news, but definitely a note. Our, our fifth host, Eric Rude, has found a good use for those silly bespoke t-shirt ads you get in your social media feed. Apparently, if you go to Google, type in your favorite car and t-shirt into the Google search engine and hit shopping, see what you find. It's as better if it's a terrible car. Like I tried for all our cars. I didn't really get anything good. The worst ones were for the GMC Yukon. But yeah, this, this one Jeff is holding up that Eric found. I'll, I'll read it to you. It says, driving my Mercury Topaz is a lot like sex to me. I'd kill for it. And it has yep. like <laughs> swords. There are like, pictures like, of swords. No, I think it's They're tire, tire tracks. It looks like Eric it does. sent this it to does. me. Yeah. Eric and I were having a text conversation and he goes, he goes, this is so upsetting, but you know, yeah. And of course, Eric's type in like everything he's ever owned except his Volvo, and uh, it's just all kinds of horrible T-shirts for popping in there. I typed in Nissan Altima, and it was like, I drive a Nissan Altima, and I know things. That's my superpower. No, you drive. Except a Nissan for how Altima. to shop for a car. <laughs> That's not true at all. Reliability statistics on a <laughs> Nissan CBT. You know everything but that. You know, I actually Gosh. found some nice NSX t-shirts, but I guess that's not a very good story. <laughs> no. But it's for yeah, Christmas. The, those those new uh the, the computer models, you can just insert anything in there. And I was trying to remember what Soggy just sold uh Randy Bish, that oh, little Simca, Simca. 1404. Yeah. Twelve oh four. Exactly. You Number, know. I don't know. And I'm sure there's something in there like, you know, God didn't make everyone perfect, but if you drive a Simca 404, you're darn close. I, yeah. So I, oh, I just, wow. yeah, thought that was funny. Speaking of perfect and things that are great, Jeff and I are both rocking our G, our guys custom bracelets. All right. Made by an enthusiast spouse who loved watches and sports cars. So I've got my, my awesome, uh, bespoke painted one to match the Mercedes and my slightly different golf colors than Jess to match my watch. Jess got a way cooler watch band and for honest, kind of a cooler car than I do. And if you want yours, the only way to get them link is in our show. AMG is, is very cool. It is, but dude, Veloster in, come on, man. Yeah. And your colors are way better. Well, and I have lots of watches and you only wear one watch. So I, I had to get it matching my car, <laughs> yeah. not my watch because yeah. I'm going to, in the same way as the Mercedes, I am going to drive this tag into the ground. It will die at my hand. So yes, I will, I will do everything on there. But it's a cool thing. Check it out. And they also have ready-to-wear bracelets. Uh, and you can check them out. Uh, but it's GYX Customs. Check them on Instagram. Link in our show notes. And it's uh, called Guys. Pronounce Guys. Guys, yeah. guys Customs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, check that out. Chrissy, did you get yours yet? I'm a little busy. She wanted pictures of the car and I have oh, to do okay. so. She's, she's so, customizing. Well, and car. she's got to go to storage to go get a pictures of the Citroen. No. no. <laughs> you just want brown. Oh, <laughs> it's a much easier way to find brown. Rust. Yeah. They do rust color. Brown. <laughs> oh, 
upcoming races. Actually, there are no upcoming races this weekend. Next week, expect the full contingent with events uh, that are hosted by Champ Car, Lemons, and of course, Lucky Dog. This weekend is a great time. Check your race car for broken things that you might have missed. You probably have a three-day weekend, right? Probably. All right, Chrissy. Well, then do recent results. I will do that too. Champ Car was at Thompson for a 12 hour. They're wonderfully BM. BMW free podium was topped by Visceral Racing Group in their 88 Porsche 944. They also set fastest lap in the, of the weekend with a one minute and 22 seconds, which is pretty Whoa, darn quick. Cooking. Whoa. Wow. Awesome. Yes. Uh, well, there was nobody around for them to do it that <laughs> That's fast. True. So there's not a whole lot of cars around. Did they run the exact same setup that we did? The same layout? I think so. Yeah. I, I would think so as well. But, you know, 80 cars versus 40 cars. Yeah, or yeah. 104 is what we had. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay, there you go. Uh, and then, so second place went to Misco Motorsports in 94 Miata, and third was Fuse, 15 in another Miata. Hmm. Misco and Fuse, I don't think they're Lemons people. No, never heard of them. Nope. All right, okay. go Champ Car. Oh, listener, feedback time. Hey, and responding to our perfect track show, Tyler S. said, Honestly, it sounds like Road America with better off-track stuff is the ultimate track. It's got a huge elevation change, the straight you mentioned with a deceptive sweeper. It's got a gut check at the kink. Off camera, that's impossible to get right. It's turn six, maybe turn 13. Big carousel, different bits of pavement with varying grips. Bonus, excellent concessions and an excellent nearby small town with an excellent bar and a lake for when you're hot. I mean, it's, it's no water park. But uh, <laughs> you know. it's close enough. Road America, who's been? I haven't have. been. Chris, you were there for one lap, or yes, yeah, yep. Okay. The brats were. I mean, they're Wisconsin. They're like you get a brat at anywhere. Yeah, and like their <laughs> like their worst brat is better than like you know the brats true. I'm gonna get right. here. It's like there getting a go. soft pretzel in Philly. Like <laughs> they're, they're, they're <laughs> exactly everywhere. just that you get them out of a, a, a shopping cart from a homeless guy. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, the best. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle, we didn't ask. Where are sure. you at in the world? I'm based out of Traverse City, Michigan. Okay. So up pretty far north. Pretty far north. So okay. if you're if you're looking at the hand, Detroit's kind of down here. We're all the way up. Oh, you're near the Oh, you're all the way up. Yeah, we're up, up by the pinky. For this audience, in relation to Gingerman. Into Gingerman, basically two hours straight north. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm so be uh, Gingerman next month. Yeah. So back to a uh, uh, listener feedback. Tyler was also going to the dealer for an oil change. Uh, I would throw shade at Tyler, but I already told you my wife goes for oil changes all the time. And it's for the same reason. They kept sending him coupons for oil and filter changes less than it would cost him to buy the oil, and the filter. We keep going for free. So because they every time my wife goes there, they're like, oh, yeah, this one's free. It just says in the computer, this lady is nuts. Don't charge her. <laughs> She'll her go Jersey stuff. on you. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, like or... hey, we go, uh, she's probably been charged two out of five times. Got a text from Tyler on my way home while I was sitting in traffic. And uh, they actually caught a ball joint uh, while they had it up for an oil change that he was suspect of, but didn't want to crawl underneath it. So totally worth the price of admission. There you go. Huh. Okay. Let's see. I fall in that same perspective. I'll take in oil changes purely seasonally. If it's cold outside, I'm not dealing with it. There's <laughs> potentially snow under the car. No, not my no, problem. No, I will pay twenty dollars to not. You have a garage. Doesn't matter. I have a garage, and Full it's of great. Northern Michigan. Northern Full Michigan. Of, yeah. Yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to deal I, with it. I, I have no garage, so if I have to do an oil change, it's like on my he, back so he, forget he that. has it yeah. he has a garage forget it's it. full of crap it would never fit a car never anyway a car. so a car. see see the problem with having the garage here in northern michigan is there's still all the snow packed under the car you're just uh, laying under a weird terrible and then it rain like rains shower. Shower. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. dirty yeah, rain yeah, shower. I get, I get uh, no, yeah. it's the no. worst no. okay no. you you i'll win. pay the tech to do that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oil oh, changes are lost leaders they are trying to sell you like injector cleaner at the local Jiffy Lube and, you know, nitrogen filled tires. So as long as you say no enough, it's cheaper than getting the materials. It's true. Anyway, cool. anyway, 
Uh, Greg O said, hope Mount Marcy attempt went well. I made the, I, I had made it to base camp with a cheese bowl team member way back in the nineties. It poured rain overnight. We woke up floating. We had our provisions detreed by a bear and scattered down the bank of the rapids. We hiked out sans food in 90 degrees temperatures with hundred percent humidity. Great times. Those are the ones you never forget. Ours was not that bad. Nobody touched our bear box. We even had it and it was all stickered. It was all ready and it was great. It was hidden in no a tree bears. and nobody found bear it. Bear comes over and goes, these people have tools. Um, it, no, it also did say, I'm don't touch over here. Don't touch this on top. We uh-huh. found a sticker of it. Yes. <laughs> nice. Uh, lemons racing, eye racing. Hey, they had an enduro at spa. It wasn't broadcast due to some tech issues. It was rain, right? Sure. That's a joke. No, yeah. yeah. That's a Formula One joke. I know. I get it. I, well, I actually, in the, yes. the 24 hours of spa was be, uh, you know, uh, bespoke with controversy because of weather as well. Dude. Uh, Jeff, they did two laps. Don't worry. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it was a race. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On Monday night, a we, the E1R race, went to Texas World Speedway and some NASCARs on the infield road course. Uh, at first, Chris picked the wrong one bad chris i don't know i know Second I was the, the wrong course okay it was the short one right second yeah. they did the intended combined course with various open wheel and daytona prototypes report from the work burger work burglar is that al jones won the first one and aaron himself won the second one so if you're out there i racing uh check us out monday nights hosted races look for e1r it's great for people who are not serious Just or because we're not time. Or if you feel yeah. that you're too serious and you need to be made less serious, that's why we bring in Tom Lamino. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> hey, Lady you know Overrides. who never brings in Tom Lamino? <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy's wow. mom has never, ever let Tom Lamino in anything ever. <laughs> Hi, Chrissy's mom. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh. Maybe. So we'll introduce our guest, even though we've already talked to him. All right. I'm actually really excited about this. I, I've been watching the Haggerty YouTube channel. I think I got Jeff on board. Chrissy, have you popped it? Because you're you're also our online entertainment guru. Uh, not as much as I should have. Fair enough. So it, all of the stuff on the Haggerty, they've made a con- serious considered effort. It's really well produced and no one yells at me, although I am waiting for Tom Cotter to go lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning. I, all right. I'm kidding. It's uh, and I'm not dogging on donut media. That's their thing, but it, it's an extensive, it's very broad selection. Uh, they've got why I drive some other bits from some big names. There's a fantastic series called Kyle's garage. And there our guest this evening calmly and intelligently walks the viewer through repairs and overhauls on literally everything from a model a, a Corvair, a Sprite all the way through tow vehicles. You had a square body you got rid of. You just picked up a, a surplus giant Chevy Coca-Cola van, which is awesome. You redid the inside of that. And of course, motorcycles. Recently chronicling an adventure of six different disciplines of vintage motorcycle racings on the same motorcycle called Six Ways to Sunday. Link for that is in our show notes. Welcome, Kyle. To start with, because we, I, I, I'd reached out to you, you'd elected on a road course with an oil leak to not race, which as a former motorcycle track day and racer myself, I appreciate. And we started talking, but tell us about Six Ways of Sunday. Yeah, Six Ways has been just a really fun project. And the roots of this, uh, the project itself is crazy. And the roots of it are absolutely makes sense when you think about it, because we rode down to Gingerman a friend and I last year to go watch some vintage racing. We had a couple beers, started talking with some people, left, said, that sounds really fun. Those are really cool people. I want to go play with them. I want to play in their sandbox. And I just started to devise a way to make that happen. And of course, if you want to go racing, you have to start at the rule book. You don't start at an event or with a car. You start at the rule book great piece of advice that we have yeah. said on this show many times yes. and completely ignored many times also <laughs> ourselves. Absolutely. Yes. 100%. I will scream it from the rooftops and I will probably not follow it from here on out. But what I did was we sat down with the rule book and we got drunk again and sat there and went, you know, technically you could do all of these and we were like, that's a really dumb idea. So we called the president of Arma, uh, Kurt Comer. And Kurt Comer said, you know, that is a really dumb idea, but I'd love to see you do it. 
I think it'd be hilarious. So then I called Jack Baruth, my editor. I said, hey, Jack, I got this really dumb idea. And he said, that is really dumb, but I want to see you do it. It was really and dumb, I Kyle, our, but yeah. I really want to see you do it. <laughs> oh, go do Jack, it. Jack and, doesn't uh, listen, so it's fine. <laughs> oh, 100%. So uh, suddenly there was all this support from the people that actually mattered. And we decided to take my 1989 XR250, which Great. was a trail bike back in its day. Great bike. And oh, fantastic machine. If you're using it for what it's intended for, which is puttering <laughs> around the farm. And uh, we decided to take that six different forms of racing in one year, inspired by On Any Sunday, uh, the Bruce Brown film back from 1970s. So these are all vintage motorcycle events or just AMA events? All vintage stuff. So uh, Arma that I run with is the Antique His or American Historic Racing Motorcycle Association. And uh, they're very uh, welcoming people. It's club racing at its, its purest form. And uh, we're doing some motocross, cross country trials. is coming up here at Barber, dirt track racing on an oval. Uh, just finished up some road course racing, uh, which kind of brought Mental and I together. And then there's still one left. We might try and go ice racing. Uh, if I can find a set of tires uh, that isn't a thousand dollars, yeah, so, you should. We gotta really want to make that one happen. So okay, and working I, that out right now. And I'm gonna jump in here because I lived in Colorado yeah. and they were doing motorcycle ice racing there, and most of the guys were making their own spikes. They were taking knobbies and you know do it. They mm -hmm. had like specific attachments there to drill. Yeah, through. screws from the from yeah. the inside. Yeah, right. And then you actually pull it's them on from the side. outside. Yeah, it's screws ah. from the outside actually. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's very similar design to a sheet metal screw, a uh, quarter hex sheet metal. Okay. Screw. Uh, it's pretty similar. The catch on them, uh, you can do it yourself. However, there is actually a lot of uh, kind of old experience in the guys that do that themselves. And there's angles that oh. you set them up. Okay. So your center ones are angled a little bit forward because that's power. And then as you transition out, you want some that go this direction and some that go this direction because that's turning and this one's breaking and that's in the corner. I don't have the knowledge. <laughs> I don't have the time. <laughs> the good guys, it takes them six hours to do a tire screwing it themselves. So there's a reason it's like $500 for an ice racing tire. And it's because it takes people a lot of time to set those up. Okay. So you've done which ones so far? You've done uh, the road so, racing? Yep, we did road racing. Uh, I went to Blackhawk Farms over in South Floyd, Illinois. Had a fantastic time. Great little track there. Uh, did a couple slow laps at Gingerman Raceway the week prior to that, and I'm sure we'll get around to that story. Uh, we did Heartland Motorsports Park in Topeka, Kansas. Did cross country and motocross on back-to-back -back days. And so we're four up right now, and then... I'm two weeks out from going down to Ashtabula, Ohio to go dirt track racing. So setting the bike up right now for that. That circle track you said, right? Yeah. Yeah. Circle track. So a uh, small oval on dirt, no bank. The, uh, the story you wrote about your weekend in Topeka, Kansas, it's on Haggerty.com and every gearhead. If you, if you read that, you can't relate to it. You've just, yeah. You're on the we road. had a great time down there. Had a bunch of friends, some college friends came down uh, and we normally attend Barber. That's our kind of annual pilgrimage down in Birmingham, Alabama. And we said, Arma's getting behind taking motorsports festivals and splitting them up all around the country. So Heartland, they had road racing, they had drag racing, they had cross country, they had uh, motocross, they had trials. And then they were going to do dirt track, but there wasn't enough entries to justify uh, basically paying the, the starter and the corner workers. So they walked that one off, which was fair, but it was a three day event and there was always bikes on track somewhere. It was wow. fantastic. So, so if you get this done, what's next? Like Enduro drag, what haven't you done yet? And same bike. Uh, I'd like to do a big point to point Enduro. The Jack Pine Enduro up here in Michigan is a storied one. It's like a hundred years old. Uh, it goes from downstate Michigan all the way up into the upper peninsula. And that one is like 50 miles usually. And it's a big race. I'm not really fit enough to pull that off, but I'd love to try it. Um, I think it'd be a good time. I think it'd be a good time. We, we got a guy who was on our team for a while, Dan, and he was an Enduro guy. And I guess in how old was he when he decided he needed to get in the cage? Th 30 something, maybe? Yes. 
but you know that sounds about right yeah yeah mid 30s i'm gonna say or yeah yeah, yeah. he said uh my knees are falling apart yeah the flip side we had bruce that you know kept riding until he shattered his ankles yeah true yes (laughs) find the middle ground there people (laughs) sounds about right and (laughs) the hard part is if you're riding modern bikes modern bikes are so easy to ride fast that you can get over your head out of your skill level very very rapidly uh, but if you're playing around on vintage bikes, you have to work so much harder that if you aren't physically fit and absolutely trim or a just gifted natural person, you can't go fast enough to hurt yourself most of the time. <laughs> oh, Bruce, could do it. I'm sure. <laughs> what the, just to, what does that uh, XR weigh? In, in, uh, obviously, there's some variations as you set it up, just ballpark. It's probably right around 280, uh, give or take. A little bit okay. uh, it's fairly light but not light enough especially considering it's air cooled it doesn't have the cooling system or carrying in any of that weight mm-hmm. uh, that modern bikes you know if you get on a ktm 250 uh two stroke these days you're pushing 220 pounds with 54 horsepower and all of i'm the staring mm-hmm. all of the torque yeah very tractable bike with great suspension and fantastic brakes as well and so this thing's 280, which is not super heavy, but it's like 14 horsepower and a drum brake rear. <laughs> so <laughs> you're not exactly super capable, but it's plenty enough to be dangerous. And it's plenty enough to have, go out and have a great time. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, so I, I, I'm the local four wheeler. I don't really know that much about motorcycles, but we'll talk about that in later too. Uh, I, you're, you're, you do a ton of automotive stuff. Obviously we talked about the Corvair and stuff. Yeah. So uh, uh, what's the first love bikes, cars, how do they mingle? How do you get from oh, one gosh. to the other? That's kind what's of your tough. history. I, yeah, I guess the history started with cars for sure. Uh, and I think part of that is, I know my mom will listen to this. So I get to say hi to my mom as well as Chrissy's mom. Hi Kyle's uh, mom. <laughs> hi Kyle's mom. Hi Kyle's mom. Uh, it's fantastic. Colleen's a wonderful woman. She put up with a lot. Uh, and Cr- Chrissy's and she, mom was our first listener. That's why we say hi. Uh, to her. That makes sense. And she still listens. That's, that's, so that's totally fair. And her cookies uh, are currency at racetracks all up and down the East coast. Ooh, this sounds like something I need to seek out. Absolutely. Come racing with us one time. Uh, needs to happen. Uh, but my, my passion and my love traces back to cars first, because my parents told me no motorcycles <laughs> and that was pretty firm. And I'm sure a lot of people share that experience. Uh, yeah. So that was uh, a hard no. And so it, it had to wait until I was 18 and could pay my own insurance bills before I could buy motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was cars and it was Chevrolet Corvair specifically. I saw a 65 Chevrolet Corvair ermine white with a fawn interior, which is this just delightfully 60s turquoise fade, like velour interior. It was, it was horrible. But uh, saw it in a junkyard and the guy agreed to sell it to me, which he knew exactly what he was doing. And I had no idea what I was doing because that car was garbage. It was so bad. Uh, But I learned a lot from that and taking it apart mainly because I didn't have any money to put it back together. Uh, And so that's easier part. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. But had the 65, bought a 64, which is the early model car with uh, a little more rounded figure. Daily drove that for years in high school and then decided uh, to go to school for cars and kind of follow that passion and and make that my life. So was that for mechanics or for what exactly were you in school for, for that sort of thing? Yeah. So I I went to McPherson College in the middle of nowhere, Kansas, uh, McPherson, Kansas, and that is a four-year automotive restoration degree. So I have a bachelor's in old cars. That's how I like to say it. I'm sure okay. they don't love that, but that's what it is. Uh, so I studied restoration for four years, and that includes uh, on the ground, you know, in class, working with your hands, mm-hmm. learning restoration, uh, learning sheet metal skills and welding, as well as engine rebuilding, paint, bodywork, finishing touches, all that stuff. And then also all of the business side of if you were going to open a restoration shop, they prepare you for that. Or if you're going to go into history and documenting cars, they can prepare you for that as well. Uh, so I learned very early on in high school to go to school for something that you love and the rest will kind of figure itself out. And I got lucky enough that 
went to school for something I loved and it actually did figure itself out relatively yeah. quickly and I'm in a great place now. now did you work I, professionally in the field or did you just get right into writing? I did not. No, I'm sorry, Chris, uh, I didn't mean to cut you off there. <laughs> There, there is not a billable shop hour in the world that would make a shop profitable with me turning wrenches. That's just, <laughs> it's not what I'm good at. I'm fantastic at working on my own cars and I'm knowledgeable, but uh, doing things by the book and what takes a skilled technician two hours to finish in a, a fantastic form takes me three or two and a half. And that half hour, that hour is, is make or break in the restoration world, especially when you're charging the billable hours that a lot of top shops command. Uh, I just don't have, I know I do not have the skill to, to work in that space. So instead I did my best to pivot and share the knowledge that I have in a different way that isn't as time constrained, which is doing the video and doing articles and uh, speaking about it. Excellent. I, I had no idea that kind of thing even actually existed. That's such a comprehensive sort of course. That's interesting. Totally agree. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Too bad it's in Kansas, but. If you get on the Haggerty channel, there's an, uh, uh, the uh, Barn Hunter episode, the, the bit with Tom Cotter, the joke I made before, where he goes out there and actually works with some of the students at McPherson. It's, yeah, I, I know we have some younger listeners and because we get emails and messages of, oh, I really love cars. How do I get into cars? And I, I, I definitely wanted to highlight that because, yeah. you know, it, it's a smart good way you know you you go in there and if they're showing you the business side you come into it with your eyes open instead of this you know the the kind of the illusion of youtube of oh you could totally restore the 65 mustang in 30 minutes It'll yeah be fine. Yes. there's so many people who go to mmi or or wyotech and they come out and they just don't understand the business itself and yep. they try and start a business because you know i'll build my own hours and just just absolutely just immediately go under so it's a train wreck and Restoration shops are no different than trying to open a late model. Uh, anything. You need to build a client base. You need to have a proper space. You need to have the insurance policy and all of those things. And uh, one of the fantastic exercises, one of my professors, Chris Paulson, does intro to restoration. And I love this exercise, even though as I was doing it, I knew I was not going to work in a shop. I knew this early on. And he had us do everything layout a customer came in with x car and in this case it was like a 1915 model t which is in the realm of true classic cars so pre-42 yeah. stuff that's a very affordable car uh, and, and, and very said, simple like you very, can actually look at simple. it and you know what's wrong with it yeah. yes oh absolutely and he said someone came in it's a complete car they want it restored how much will you build them and that was our homework assignment. And everybody over the long weekend spends time writing it, everything down and what their billable hours are. And we all come back and, you know, in your head, you're like, oh, I can restore a car for, you know, nine, $10,000. Model T, all the parts are reproduced. Everything's there. There's probably good stuff on the car, you know, this fictional car. And the reality was we'd all come in with like $32,000 estimates because of overhead and paying someone to help us and sending chrome plating out and, you know, nickel plating and all these things. And we were just like, well, how is it so expensive? And he was like, that's the real world. And now you have to go to the client and explain that this $32,000 is actually a good spend, despite the fact that it's a $22,000 car on the best day. Those Babbitt Stop. bearings aren't going to pour themselves. <laughs> not, no. I don't no, even know not. what that means. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, oh that's fantastic. You, you should be happy you don't know what Babbitt bearings well, are. That's, uh, that's a dark hole. Uh, we, we might go into a darker hole because we're about to enter a field that I I grew up just living in the backseat of a TSD rally car. And we've talked okay. about time, speed, distance rally here. But you've been in the great race like three times in, in a what? So we did great, great race three times now. And in a 1917 Peerless. Uh, that goes by the Green Dragon. Uh, and this is a car that was originally born as a big town sedan and then was converted into- The sports uh, a, model, right? Yeah, kind of a board track racer style car uh, sometime in the late 20s, give or take. And then went into hiding for many, many years. And then a gentleman by the name of John Hollingsworth uh, in Arkansas brought it out in the late 80s and then 
kind of rebuilt it. The body is a tribute to some of the older 20s cars, but it's not necessarily faithful to anything. If you're familiar with old, old cars, uh, the Green Dragon actually means something, especially when tied to the name Peerless, because Barney Oldfield did a lot of land speed records in Peerless Green Dragons. That's That was his you, uh, uh, nomenclature. Yeah. I, I want to say, wasn't that a, like a four-engine thing that they would run up and down the beach, or have I got that wrong? Uh, Oldfield never ran multi-engine stuff, okay. but okay. he ran a uh, big, big cylinder count, big displacement stuff okay. uh, that was basically no bodies. He would just sit somewhere on a bell housing with like a yoke steering wheel and just <laughs> pray and die. Oh, it was yeah. insane. Probably not safe. Well, yeah. the, the great race is not sane either. For those who Sorry. don't know what it is, this is a cross country time speed distance rally in classic automobiles. None of the computers, nope. none of no, no timing devices other than a big ass clock. We don't um, need them. I got Chris. Yeah, it is. You, yeah. you say classic, but isn't it like pre-war? I mean, like it's they not. Have, yeah, it's, it's, they it's, they encourage pre-war cars, but it's open to anything okay. pre-1972. Okay. So it's, you yeah. can take a 68 Camaro with air, factory air conditioning if you wanted to. Uh, <laughs> but there is a handicap, essentially, that the older the car, the better you're going to do. So if you want to win great race, you're more than likely going to find yourself in a 32 Ford. Uh, which has won like five of the last six years um, or something older than that, uh, which uh, the Sharps won in an 11 Cadillac, but they've run like a 1909 Renault. Yeah. That is, that is Crazy old stuff. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And, and this stuff. is how many days and how many miles? Uh, we usually do right around 2,200 miles, uh, which is pretty big run. And, <laughs> and it's nine days. Nine days of rallying. Oh, that is, that's a lot. That is amazing. For my co-host, the um, the Dodge Monaco that was showed up as the Sheriff JW Pepper car in the Lemons race, all of those guys on that team met doing the great race. Uh, yeah, we have we have a couple pre seventy two four cars, and I can't imagine doing this in any of them. <laughs> yeah, Although, and you it had to be terrible because you didn't have a roof. What? No, we we run an open car, which is uh -huh. an absolutely certain kind of crazy. Yeah, uh, and, and and you can't you can't stop for repairs. This is like normal rally rules. Oh, if you don't awesome. make it to the end every day, you're eliminated. Uh, they won't eliminate you. So that's one of the interesting things. The great race is slightly more forgiving okay. than uh in like an SCCA uh, TSD or anything like that. Uh, if you miss a checkpoint due to repairs or you're more than three minutes late, it's capped at three minutes. So this year we actually had uh, multiple roadside repairs. Yeah, there's there's the Peerless. Uh, such a fantastic car. Big V8, uh, 330 cube V8 with 80 horsepower and a flywheel that probably <laughs> weighs as much as I do. Uh, shifting <laughs> that thing takes an eternity. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're selling you, us. You're no. selling us. Yeah. That but you, great. But you lose no RPM, so it's awesome. <laughs> It's fantastic. But uh, we actually had two roadside repairs this year. Our condensers went out uh, and left us stranded. But fortunately, we stopped in some gentleman's driveway and I jumped out of the car. I thought it was fuel pump problems. We have two fuel pump wired in series on separate switches so you can switch them. And that's what I thought our problem was to so switch them. It was still sputtering and farting and trying to die. Jumped out. It would idle fine, but it would not rev for anything which is, if you are familiar with points-based ignition cars, that's a condenser problem. Uh, so I was trying to diagnose it on the side of the road and a gentleman pulls up into the driveway and says, well, what are you guys doing? Like, well, I don't know, it's broken. Sorry. I, I, <laughs> I don't know, are we in your driveway? He was like, yeah, the shop's open just down the road. Why don't you just pull down there? And I got all the tools you could ever need. We're like, what kind of luck is this? That's so okay. we, we've had that kind of luck. That's great. Oh, it's the best luck, isn't yeah. it? So, so we've done some cross-country rallying in crap cans, and it's amazing. You know, $500 car, New York to New Orleans oh, yeah. and back. And it's amazing the magic that happens on the side of the road when you just look totally insane and the world is like, what in the hell are you people what? doing? Yeah, you put stickers on the side of something old and suddenly everyone wants to know what's going on. Yeah. Our, our, our friend Eric everybody. met his fiance 
riding in a Ford Fiesta with the roof cut off, done up like an Amish buggy, uh, asking this wonderful lady on the side of the road for directions. How's that relationship going? Because anytime I've heard they met <laughs> because of a Ford Fiesta, <laughs> usually it didn't go well. But if she's willing to put up with that, it's true. You got a point. It's true. You got a fair point there. Well, I am jealous. That is on my bucket list of events, but I will never probably be able to do it, even though I have friends and relatives that could pull it off and ha- oh, yeah. I, a couple that have great race experience and it's and you could the the best part about great race is you can take it as seriously or as casual as you want uh you can go out there like us in the 17 peerless or the guys in all the 16 hudsons and go to compete and shoot for you know single digit days which means over the course of a single day we would score six seven seconds off uh goal pace Or you can go out and you can basically tour and do none of the corrections and have five minute days and no one cares. And we all have a great time at the end of the day and at every lunch stop. So if you want to go out and compete, great. If you want to tour and just drive old cars with 120 of your closest friends, you can do that too. That's awesome. Weld up the MG, Chris. Jeff and I are taking it on an adventure. You guys should take the Citroën. That would be much more fun. <laughs> well, there you go. Fact. That'd be a riot. Kyle, oh any uh, content you could make out of a 72 Citroen SM? With a roll cage? With a roll cage. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, All and, kinds of content out of that. And it has a... Uh, marital shifter, aid. Uh, yeah, marital aid. Thank you for a shifter. Um, yes. <laughs> Truth. It does. Huh, um, right. wait, wait, wait. I'll put that link. <laughs> anyway, Mental's going to do it, so he won't put the link. Oh, good. On. Go ahead. Oh, Keep going. that's a shame. All right. It, it'll All right. be here somewhere. Yeah. The, Will, it? The, Will it? Actually, you know what? It'll be the next video. I'll, I'll put that up there as our suggested <laughs> there next video. Suggested video. Jeff's, Jeff's walk around of the S&M, the Citroen yeah. S&M. <laughs> Check it is off it your bingo prep? cards. Somebody yeah. says Citroen there rocks. I'll send, I'll send you a link to this video, Kyle, and you'll wish I hadn't. Please do. Yes. <laughs> yes. Do you want a Citroen? Because we have one. <laughs> I for sale i d- this garage tells you that i want all the things <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes it's it's a six cylinder just like it's the rest of them around there somewhere. forever full and yet i don't spend a day that i'm not looking at something going i could afford that uh, yeah. <laughs> every time <laughs> yes indeed all right so on Haggerty, sometimes you write for you write other people's content so you'd like something for jay leno's garage or hoonigan what are uh some of the surprises that came with writing those pieces are you like friends with leno you know what what kind of what kind of secrets you got going on (laughs) it's always entertaining and and leno writes for a column for our magazine uh which is fantastic it's wonderful to hear his insight i've met him on a handful of occasions but i would not say we are friends and if i'm writing up one of his videos Uh, It's not like we discuss it uh, beforehand or while I'm doing it. But uh, the fun thing about all of those assignments is trying to bring something that is not in the video to what I'm writing. Uh, So finding some tidbit of information or some history of whatever is featured in the video that's not there, that gives them a reason to read what I'm writing and not just watch the video and move on. Uh, and doing all of that research inevitably just makes my brain grow and grow and grow until I'm just this endless repository of knowledge that uh, I don't know the three main facts of a given car, but I know the six off weird things over in the corner because that's <laughs> what I usually include in my writing. Uh, so it's, it's always fun to take on those assignments because it is a weird challenge in that way. But it sounds like this group also knows all those six weird facts over here. Those are more fun. (laughs) Some of of us. us. Four of them. Yeah. About weird things. You know, like if it's a, 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 Chris could probably go toe to toe with some of the British things. I know you let him run a lot of British things, but unless it's like a bastardized Japanese car built in America, Diamond Storm, I'm not going to know those things. So. I'll know if uh, Steve I've, McQueen owned one or not. At, uh, yeah. <laughs> I miss Diamond Star Motors. You bring that up. I, I <laughs> That's like three podcasts in a row. We brought oh. Diamond Star Motors. <laughs> bring it all around. Oh, boy. Uh, it's DSMs. Yes. <laughs> uh, I Chris, have, I have, so, yeah. yeah we, well, 
speaking of weird details and tech stuff, you know, we, we try to be techie sometimes, and yeah. then we struggle with how to be techie, but have people actually care about it and how deep to get, like we, there's so much to say, but now everyone's lost. Uh, especially when we're oh, doing yeah. like the show on cage design and we're like, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you're, you're talking weird angles and how to approach all of these things. How deep like, do you go? Like six people are like, Oh, and they're writing it down, <laughs> Phil. Um, but you know, other people are, are uh, over their heads. Sure. So how, what are your thoughts on like how deep to get like the how to or the lifestyle pieces? Like where, where do you draw the line or how do you find that boundary? Oh, it's, it's really tough and it's also super easy. And, and I know that's totally contradictory, but Tell the nice more. thing is, yeah, you go super <laughs> DIY and very deep into things that you know incredibly well. You won't hear me talk at length on how to uh, patch sheet metal because I'm not an expert at that, but I'll tell you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, which is not the same as telling you how to do it. There's, there's a difference there, if that makes sense. Mm, and so oftentimes if I'm yeah. diving deep Probably. into something, yeah. it's something that I'm an expert on and I, or at least I'm extremely confident that what I'm doing is 100% right, inarguable, and I'm willing to stand behind it uh, for the future. And in the YouTube comments, which you all have read YouTube comments. Yes. So if yes. I'm willing to go and defend myself in the YouTube comments over it, I will say it in a video. Uh, but otherwise I tend to lean more towards the vlog side of things. And so it's, that's the line to walk, but it is a really hard line to walk. It's like today I'm doing this on my bike, not, yes. Hey everyone, this is how to do it for your bike. Yeah. And I, sometimes it's saying it. I'm doing it this way for this reason. And it, that kind of is a great caveat. Cause I'm not spending $20,000 on a <laughs> licensing tool to clear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, and it's really. and or I genuinely don't have the right tool, or I'm going to make the right tool for this specific reason, or whatever it is. Uh, the Healy, you know, you guys have brought that up a couple of times. The 1969 Austin Healy that I picked up on a Lark last June was really crusty. That was uh, the, that's the small Healy, right? Yeah, the, little blue Healy, the bug eye. Yeah. Uh, so this is this was a Mark IV. Uh, so it was not a bug eye. No, it was, it was the after. Yeah. 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 Uh, slightly later, a little more squared off, still a beautiful car and a delight to drive. Uh, but this one had the 1275. So a lot more power. You're looking at like 68 horsepower, uh, which is a significant increase plenty over in a bug eye. Little car. Yeah. yeah. Plenty. Oh, delightful. And a four speed and it ran down the road. It's great, but it was really crusty underneath and it was still safe, but the floor pans were gone. The structure was not great, but safe. Everything else is eh, really iffy. And people really got worked up that I said I wasn't going to rust repair that car. And the fact of the matter is they built millions of those. And that one's just not worth saving. It's better than a parts car. Like someone, the guy I sold that to, so I sold that car recently. Uh, and I, I, I'm actually really happy I sold it and not for the reason that most people probably think, which is I'm now not a British car owner. Uh, I sold it to a, <laughs> yeah. who would have thought? That, that's not the reason. Uh, I sold it to a 20 year old kid whose wife was super excited about it and always wanted to drive a little British roadster. And I was like, hey, dude, like, took it to cars and coffee, threw a for sale sign. And I was like, if anyone talks to me, sure, whatever. And he walked up, started a conversation. And I was like, yeah, there's a number on the window. But like, if it's you buying it, that number is way lower than that. And it, nice. I was just so happy to see a 22 year old kid. Uh, come up and he was like, I've never really owned a classic before. I think this would be super cool. And I was like, it's a project car. And he's like, great. I want to learn. Fantastic. This is your car. And I'm not making any money on it, but it's, it's fun. We used it to create some content. I learned some stuff. I had some fun driving it, send it down the road. It didn't hurt anybody. Yeah. And a car like that is such a good first classic because there's plenty of parts, plenty of knowledge. You can't go too wrong. Even the stuff, like it's not that big. So even when it's a part, it doesn't take up that much room. No. Stuff isn't all that heavy to move around. You like, can push yeah. it when it invariably breaks because I had a yeah. 72 midget. <laughs> yeah, yes. totally. It's true. Well, honestly, one of the goofier things that I thought of, uh, a friend brought it up that used to work in a tire shop. 
that entire car is like 2,200 pounds, 2,250, 23, maybe tops. At most. And yeah. At most. Yeah. You don't need big tools to work on it. You can buy the smallest aluminum Harbor Freight Jack and it'll pick up that entire car. Yeah. And so when you, when you start to think about it, like you don't need a six ton floor Jack and huge Jack stands and all this stuff, like everything that goes with well, the car also you, stores down small. You, you do need it for the truck that you're going to tow it with. Cause it's not going to, it's going to break and you're going to have to go get it. And you're going <laughs> to. Okay. So I, now that he can... only left me stranded twice. And both times, all I needed was a nail file to get home. <laughs> Uh, uh, points oh, again or, points or hammer come on everyone with a british car almost has fixed their F- su fuel pump by whacking it with a hammer a few times it goes yeah. i didn't have the su fuel pump okay. anymore so i was lucky good. in that regard good yeah actually i think the last time i had to tow my father's mg td by the way uh it was with a strap to my i think my mother's or my uh wife's like SUV, like cute little SUV. So yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. I never had to have it towed, but there was definitely a couple standing on the roads going, why am I doing this? How about jump starts with your wife pushing? pushing <laughs> yeah, you know what the problem with that is, is when they go, you fall down because you're leaning down so far. Yeah. Like if you're pushing a regular car, you know, it's great also gravity is here. when the MG has suicide <laughs> doors car. that you can't, you have to say, I have to Ooh. sit in this because, and you have to push because the doors are going the wrong way. You can't run and jump into it. Let MG me at, at, please can't. ask me how I know this. Just please. <laughs> that, that might have been the only reason that my fiance would learn to drive a stick. Was so she <laughs> wouldn't have to push the car. Well, I, I drive a stick and I still wasn't about to pop start an MGTF oh, that wasn't mine. In a little my, parking lot. In a little my, parking lot. Up a hill. On gravel, I'm sure. Yeah. Hell. My MG midget, I got to where I could bump start that thing myself. Get it running on a flat oh, thing. Yeah. Open the door. Throw my six foot body into that tiny little thing like Jackie Chan in that movie. Hit it in first gear and drive away. It I mean, works fine enough. with doors that you open can... the right way, but with suicide doors, yes. there's oh, no, no, no yeah. suicide, <laughs> suicide doors. You better go over. Just, just go over. Hazard just go over. Yeah, you exactly. could yeah. go over. The steering wheels this big. You can't get past. <laughs> That's the hardest part. <laughs> Even T- on the TF would be the hard because yeah. you could miss the cockpit. Oh. Real, the really. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's just go it's over. True. Oh man! <laughs> Welcome to everyone screws up their British British, 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 car. British ownership. Everyone, yeah, uh, everyone bump starts their car. <laughs> I I have to say that, and this is maybe thankful of why I'm into imports. But my father got rid of his '66 uh, midget, so he's a Spridget guy too, and traded it on a Datsun 2000, not a 1600, a fairly oh. 2000. He was bringing it home for the dealership, and he said. Wow, this car is a little bit more powerful than my than my MG. And then he reads in the like the owner's manual, like during the break-in period, do not go over 100 miles an hour in fourth gear. It was a five-speed, and and he's like, my MG wouldn't do 100 miles an hour. What did I buy here? And uh, yeah, it was the worst car ever. And you had to take the gr- you when you had to change the clutch, you started the grill. But what? Yeah, on the Datsun. Take, on the Datsun, you had to take everything out. You had to lift the motor out. So, sheesh. I mean, the Healy was that same way. Everything had to come out. And I had some conversations with some people of like leaving the trans in the car. Some of the experts, because you either pull the motor and trans to together and separate it all on the bench, or you try and leave the trans in the car and just pull the motor. And I was like, well, that sounds like it'll save me time. They're like, no, nah, you end up arguing around. Just <laughs> yank the trans. Just deal yeah. with it. Cause it's an enclosed drive shaft is the weird goofy thing. So the drive shaft ends up captive in the car, in the chassis, essentially, when you pull everything out, hmm. it's just, a, it's a, such a strange setup. It was They're really fun weird. to work on one. Oh, British yeah. cars really are all weird. No, the MGA is the same way. You can't take the trans out by itself, the whole, th- but like you also can't <laughs> get them out together because you can't take the front end off because it's all, it's all one you know, piece, one yeah. swoopy piece. You got to pull uh. the engine then pull the trans yeah i'm very excited yeah. i believe an mga is going to be my next project car as i say well, that i love currently MGA. nothing back here is i want a miata swap at mga i've had, I've had miata with a 515 yeah 
I think it's, that would be just a fantastic driving car. Also almost for sale. Would you like a red one? <laughs> <laughs> everything's for sale. Everything's for sale. Not everything. Not the is that why you invited me? Just to buy your cars? <laughs> <laughs> no, we just have a lot for sale that we're we, just not we just have a lot. And a lot of common interest in cars, apparently. Based apparently. On what we've got, yeah. <laughs> Oh boy! Uh, all right, Jeff, so, uh, yeah, yeah I, 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 we that, here's something that's not for sale, but I need help because I already mentioned I am not a motorcycle guy. I have a Korean, I believe, clone of a CT70 that I have never been able to get to run right. Not that I've tried. Uh, as a car guy, how do you dive into fixing motorcycles? They're like totally different. Like uh, they are and they aren't. It's the same principles. Don't overthink it. Uh, probably what's going on with yours. So the interesting thing on all of those uh, knockoff Honda motors, it's usually the carburetors. The carburetors on those are horrible. Get a legit mm -hmm. Honda mm -hmm. carburetor and it'll probably run fine. Oh, that's interesting I because would, when the guy sold it, it to me, he said the carburetors busted because when you started it, it would just tack up to the roof. Hmm. So yeah. I bought a $9 carburetor off of eBay, and that is probably the mistake that I have made. No, those, those Shangway carburetors, my SL125 runs a Shangway carburetor, and I think I have to clean it every six weeks. It's so finicky, whereas the Honda carbs just aren't. And there's a reason they're hard to come by is because they're worth holding on to, and you can actually rebuild one. Uh, and what they're Makunis, I think. I remember yeah. right. Macuni is, uh, yeah. it's a knockout. Jeff, legit, Jeff is absolutely. adding to cart right now. Add to cart, yeah. add to cart, <laughs> type, 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 add to cart. Yeah. Go find a good one at like uh, mid Ohio AMA vintage days, uh, which happened. Just oh, a we got Carlisle ago. out here. I'm not that far oh, from Carlisle, Carlisle. So honestly, you'd probably find one at Hershey that some old guy doesn't know what they got. Yeah. Which hmm. interesting. I, I should go out to Hershey. Hershey would be fun this year. Hey, go to Chocolate World. It's fun. <laughs> I've been out there a handful of times. I've never gone through the actual amusement park. I've only ever done like the water park inside the Hershey Lodge. And it's just so weird to have like a chocolate themed water park that just It doesn't... is kind of weird. It's like what am I swimming <laughs> in? <laughs> just not good. <laughs> Mental's yeah. like, what the hell are you people? Yeah, doing? It's all just We're... really a water park. That's yeah. really what it is. <laughs> It doesn't make sense. That's uh, really weird. It's a pretty great park, actually. We've, yeah. we've gone uh, very often. Fantastic hotel. <laughs> Absolutely amazing swap meet. Everybody should go once mm. and, and walk it. We had a great time there. Supposedly, they have an excellent hill climb also, which we have to get they to. They do. They do. And they um, run some really cool cars up that. It's a short run, uh, but there's fantastic viewer spectating. And there's some really cool uh, vintage oh, iron that shows up. We would be it. competing. Ooh. <laughs> All right. With what? Right. And anything. It's Pennsylvania Hill Climb Association. You can run modern stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're so, pretty open. What, right now, how many how many working race cars do we how have? How many race cars do we have right now? Of working? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Not going That's anywhere stiff. right now. <laughs> yeah. Let's change topics. Somebody ask another question. <laughs> How many broken race cars do we have right now? All of them. Five. <laughs> five? Do we really have five broken race cars? The Z, Mazda, the, the Mazda, Z, the both Honda. Hondas, and the Citroen. What both? Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. The second Honda is not a broken race second car. Second Honda is just an it has it, race car. It, that, exactly. Okay. It's an unfinished Fine. race car. So we just have one with there's two chassis and one break, yep. and that just counts as one? Apparently. No, no, no. Like no You've got like four. You've got four broken race cars and one under construction race car. <laughs> okay. It still sounds bad. <laughs> None of them are working. There's, there's potential. Every, there's potential in the fifth one. There's a lot right. of potential. Every, everyone seems confident that that fifth one, literally the first time it sees the crack or the track, will then join the other group immediately. Oh, uh, we hope not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, race cars are always broken or on their way to being broken that's it's well, true yeah. entropy is very strong in the race car world <laughs> yeah that is true anyway oh. chrissy i think you have the wrap-up question here i think. We do anybody any more questions before we wrap this up 
No, go for it. Wow. That was silence. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, it's been awesome having you, Kyle. Thank you so much for coming out and talking with us. Uh, we have links to your Instagram, YouTube contribution to Haggerty. What else uh, can you tell us about where people can find you? Uh, yeah. So the links are haggerty.com slash articles and videos post there regularly. My Instagram's straight out of Kansas uh, because Kansas is home for me. Those are the two main places to find everything that I'm working on. There's a bunch of fun projects that are brewing right now that I don't get to talk about. So uh, be sure to tune in in the That's future. Fun. And 2022 is going to be a riot for Haggerty. So, what is it with uh, Kansas there. people working on cars on YouTube? It's like, I got nothing. <laughs> there's there is a lot of us there's, there's a lot of them right there's, there's, there's just there's not a whole lot to do there's no beach there's no chocolate fountain to swim in not, yeah, none sure. of those you know, things there's no chocolate can, water park the, or at the least tornadoes don't to. the tornadoes don't sneak up on you you can see them coming from like missouri yeah it's fine True. <laughs> there is nothing like watching a kansas storm roll in you can sit on the front porch for like two hours and just like, oh yeah, it's going to be here and I'm going to wait until it's here before I do anything. <laughs> Great. Perfect. Well, we're glad and you escaped to Michigan for the snow. Right? How is that an improvement? I don't know if it is. Northern we'll Michigan out. too. Ugh. The it's cold true. part. <laughs> the cold part. It's true. Well, thank you for having me. I, I really enjoyed it. This is awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank awesome. you for coming. Ready? All right, and now we move on to everybody's favorite part. We just keep waiting for it and waiting for it and waiting for it. And just, waiting for it. just the tip. Safety tip from Chrissy. Safety tip for me. Okay, we had to go with flash flooding because we're getting some serious rain. I was looking on Facebook while we were talking and there's people that are just washing away. It's like, it's pretty bad out here. So let's talk about some reminders here. So uh, it takes just 12 inches of rushing water to carry away most cars. Just two feet of rushing water can take out away a SUV or a truck, according to Noah. Uh, if you're driving and approach a flooded area, do your best to find an alternate route. Do not drive through the flowing water. This sounds so dumb, but people do it all the time. All it, the time. All the time. You, every time you see a thing about flood water, there's always a car in the middle and usually they drove there. So uh, it could absolutely just take your take your car away if you're not ca careful. Even if you think that de the depth seems low, don't get risked caught getting in it. Just turn around, figure out, park your car somewhere higher ground, move away. Uh, if, make sure also kind of side note, if your wipers are on, your headlights are on, people need to be able to see you, uh, especially if there's rain. That's an easy one for you to if, do. If, if you live in Atlanta, do not turn on your flashers. Oh, it's everywhere. No, oh, it's everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, wherever you live. Oh. Flashers, flashers are when you're stopped. Do not drive with your flashers on. No. And then, and then when no. everybody does it, you actually can't actually see what's going on. Now, right. I was following someone on the highway just last night. I made an eight hour trip to buy a motorcycle with a friend to immediately turn around and drive back. Because you need more behind you? Or yeah, it was a problem. Was you'll, you'll, notice the the entire, you'll notice the entire lack of objection yeah. from any so, of us. Does it matter? It really doesn't matter who bought it. It just, it happened. It's in your following, circle now. So you're fixing yeah, it. Following a Jeep Cherokee with his flashers on at 78 miles an hour. And I was like, what is wrong with this guy? He's driving really fast for his flashers on in broad daylight. Right. And no, oh, it was God. because uh, it was because the hood was ratchet strapped down and flapping the whole time. Then don't go 70. Don't go 70. Right. Do Take 30, the hood do off. Do 35 in the emergency lane or yeah, or take the hood off. Yeah, exactly. Just take the hood off. Because this was clearly not a new problem. This did not occur <laughs> on this trip. The ratchet strap has been on there for a week. Clearly. That, that, that ratchet strap was sun faded. <laughs> <laughs> there was problems here. And the problem is when anybody, it, it draws your attention when people have flashers on because you're not sure, like, well, do they have a flat tire? What's oh, really oh, wrong with you? Yeah. And then sure. really, it's actually distracting when you have a whole bunch of traffic in front of you and everybody's flashing their lights. You actually can't see who's in the lane and what's going on. Don't do that. Thanks for bringing that up. Yes. Let's get on our, get, get off our soapboxes about that one. Okay. Uh, if your vehicle starts to become surrounded by water and stalls, abandon it immediately and get to higher ground. Floodwaters can rise at rapid speeds and sweep your vehicle away and your occupants. So just don't be in it when it goes away. Uh, after you leave your vehicles, make sure you get to higher ground and stay out of the flooded zones and just try to run away. Um, it only takes six inches of water to knock down and sweep away a fully grown adult, says Noah. Mental. What do you have? 
approximately every year, uh, we have had 30 people in the last 30 years die because of flash flooding. It's a desert in Las Vegas. You live in you, Vegas. If you drowned in Las Vegas, you're an idiot. Uh, so, but or you're every- really drunk at the pool. <laughs> I was gonna in the middle you're of the mezzanine, 38 year old rock star on a cocaine bender, <laughs> then you might drown in Vegas. But they, they, they have to put they have to put signs everywhere because people see three feet of rushing water from the flash floods of the mountains. They're like, oh, I could totally drive through this. No, you can't. It's not worth it. No, that's dumb. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> All right. Do we have any clue what we're doing next week? Yes, we do. Oh, my God. Is that possible? Oh, my gosh. We're so excited because it's seven seven episodes late. It's going to be uh, it's totally on brand for us. We're going to do our 200th episode show, which we didn't we weren't able to do before. It's going to be a live. Ask us anything uh, show. Make sure you find us. Tell us things. Ask us things. Look at our social medias for the links. We will be able to send it to you. It's going to be your next uh, next Wednesday, eight Eastern, five Pacific and uh you can figure us uh we'll just tell you more will there be advertising and give you links and make sure you ask us some questions and come up with some stuff to talk Rude to us comments about. accepted yep. Rude, yes uh, we have uh, a, we, we have a guest guest the rental that'll be a feature on yes this i heard about this oh, uh okay. we also have uh we will be able to if you are joining us open up your microphone and let you join us live so uh, if you're interested in doing that, please make sure you show up. All right. And uh, tell me if you don't want to be, because I might turn your microphone on and ask you a rude question. <laughs> I, I did that to someone who works in the banking industry. I won't name him, but he said, I, I couldn't talk. I was like on security. So whatever. Kyle, anyway, thanks for coming by, buddy. Yeah, Kyle, well. this has hey, been absolutely. great. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, I definitely hey. read your stuff every now and then, and now I'm going to read it more often because... You know, once I know somebody, I can hear their voice in my head. That's all I so, can ask for. <laughs> so, yeah. So, thanks for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a racer. And everyone can own that little British sports car. Even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like and subscribe button. And then talk to us down there in the doodly do. Uh, if you hated us, you can even tell us why you hated us. We really don't mind. Just interact in some way. Uh, if you have any questions or show ideas, join us next week for the live show. We already pushed that. You can check it out on our Facebook page or on our Instagram page, uh, Everyone Racers, or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. You can Reddit. still text us. Reddit. I looked for the Reddit. What is the name of the Reddit channel? E1R. Oh. I was spelling it out. How did I not figure that out? Anyway, so find us on Reddit. Why we're on Reddit? I have no idea, but we're going to be on Reddit now. Thanks again, and until next week, keep the shiny side up, unless it's a motorcycle, then just keep it horizontal, everybody.